Shabbat Shalom. Today is the Sabbath. At least it is when you're going to be seeing this video. It is not for me because I wouldn't make a video on the Sabbath. Although I will definitely schedule a YouTube to upload one for me on that day. Yeah. Today, as the title gave away, I am going to start with Genesis 3. I'm not really sure how long I'll make it, but I'm sure the title will reflect how long, how far I went either to, you know, we'll just leave it there. I have gotten my new Bible. I'd like to show you here. I'm trying not to lose my place, but here it is. The scriptures. Yeah. So this is my standard King James Bible. This is, yeah, standard size, normal, everyday King James Bible. This is my scriptures. Look at that. I got the large print version. I did. This is the hardcover large print version. You can find it on their website, uh, Institute for Scripture Research, ISR. I, I, yeah, just you can find them in other places, too. But I bought mine directly from them. It took them about two, three weeks to get it to me. So that's that. All right. As I have said before, I tend to butcher a lot of names and Hebrew words in my Bible. My Bible has definitely been translated with Hebrew, and it keeps a lot of the names the same. If you guys would like to know more on why I believe what I believe and why I have the Hebrew Bible, I could refer to you to uh, Bear Independent. Just go to his... <laughs> Just go to his channel and type in Bear Independent Bible, and yeah, I agree with a lot of the points he made on that particular video. I I don't agree with every point everyone makes, so I'll just keep that in mind. I take everything from other people and their opinions with a grain of salt. I am definitely not a pastor, a preacher. I am not a teacher. I am just one who is reading the Bible from front to back. And I am recording it to replay it to my children for the most part. That being said, we are on Genesis 3. If you didn't catch Genesis 1 and 2, I'm going to put up a playlist. I'll just name it Bible Study, and I will add this video and that one to it at the time this is uploaded. So that should be done by the time you see this. All right. This is going to be fun. I, I'm still very uncomfortable reading like this, especially this particular book, especially with all the words in here that I can't pronounce properly. So, yeah, bear with me here. All right. Now, if you remember, we were we just left off at two and they had just sinned. They had gone against the will of the father. And yeah. I am wrong. I am wrong. Yeah. Disregard what I just said. That's where we're at at three. <laughs> okay. That's what we're starting into. We, we left off at two where uh, Adam and Eve were, yeah, they were, they've been made for each other. Let's just put it that way. All right. Three. And, and the Nahash, the Nahash, the serpent is what it's translated to in the King James Bible. I do have both of them back and forth because some of these words that I will yeah, try to agree with some of the other translations. So the Nahash, which is the serpent, according to the King James, was more crafty than all the lives of the field, which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said to the woman, is it true that Elohim has said, do not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the Nahash, we are to eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree in which is the midst of the garden, is which is in the midst of the garden. Elohim has said, do not eat of it, nor touch it, lest you will die. And the Nahash said to the woman, you shall certainly not die. That's some deception right there. Anyway. All right. Uh, verse five. For Elohim knows that the day in that the day you eat of it, your eyes shall be opened and you shall be like Elohim, knowing good and evil. 
And the woman saw the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desirable to make one wise. And she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave her husband with her, and he ate. <sighs> the first sin. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked and they sewed, sewed fig leaves together, and they made loin coverings for themselves. And they heard the voice of Yahweh, Elohim, walking, you know, walking about in the garden, toward the, uh, where am I? Sorry, I lost my place. Toward the wind of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh, Elohim, among the trees of the garden. You're hiding from God. How many of us know that feeling? 9. And Yahweh, Elohim, called upon Adam and said to him, Where are you? Did he not know? He had to have known. And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and so I hid myself. And he said, capital H, he, Elohim, God, and he said, Who made you know that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree which I commanded that you not eat? Yep, sure did. <laughs> and the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the tree and I ate. And Yahweh Elohim said to the woman, What is it you have done? And the woman said, The Nahash deceived me and I ate. And Yahweh Elohim said to the Nahash, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the livestock and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you are to go and eat dust all of the days of your life. That's, yeah. Still, to this day, snakes go on their belly, right? And I put enemy enemy. In the mitty, I can't pronounce that word, between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed shall crush your head, he shall crush your head, and you shall crush his heel. He's saying this to the serpent. To the woman, he said, I greatly increased your sorrow and your conception, bring forth children in pain, and your desire is for your husband, and he does rule over you. He does rule over you. A lot of controversy on that one, right? And the man he said, and to the man he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, do not eat of it, cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you are to eat of it and all of the days of your life, and the ground shall bring forth thorns and thistles for you. And you shall eat. Eat the plants of the field. Next page. By the sweat of your face you are to eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. And the man called his wife's name Hawa, Hawa, Eve, because she became the mother of all living. And Yahweh Elohim made coats of skin for the man and his wife and dressed them. And Yahweh Elohim said, See, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil, and now at least he put out his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. So Yahweh Elohim sent, sent him out of the garden of Eden to the ground from which he had been taken. And he drove the man out, and he, capital H, Yahweh, and he drove the man out, and he placed uh, Kerbim at the east of the Garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way of the Tree of Life. I gotta look up that word, it said, Kerbim, where was I? I believe it, it's translated, K-E-R-U-B-I-M, Ker Kerbim? Kerbim, and that's 24, uh, 
chapter 324. So where is, see if I can find it in this other book and see what it says. Yeah, cherubims, that's what he said. I believe it's modernly thought of as an angel, but I don't really know if that's true or not. So yeah, we'll leave it there. Uh, just a review here, going back just a couple of verses back to the beginning. So Adam blamed his, his wife for it. She gave it to me, so I should have listened to her, right? Obviously, their relationship dynamic was equal at the time before, completely on level equal ground and then Yahweh said because you have done this we will do this and you will have pain Twenty one. he made coats of skin for them now I mean a lot of people will think well he just skinned an animal and but a more broad thought about that is that Yahweh made skin, you know, this stuff, skin, that perhaps before that they were not flesh and blood, that they were eternal beings of something, you know, the Father made man in his image. So that doesn't necessarily mean the man was flesh and, or the Father's flesh and blood and looks like, I mean, if I get to heaven and the dude's all like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so my thought about that is that maybe, maybe he just wanted to, or maybe he just gave them skin. Like before then they didn't have flesh and blood. That's my thoughts on it. So, all right, I'm going to keep going. We'll go to four now. Genesis four. And Adam knew Hawa, his wife, Eve, his wife. Actually, I think it's pronounced Adam. Adam and yeah, his wife. And she conceived and bore Kwan Kwan and said, I have gained a man, Yahweh. <laughs> she has gained a man. I think it says something different over here. Um Yeah, see in the King James Bible it says, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And in the more literal translation, it says, and I have gained a man, Yahweh. She just went down to the store and picked one up. <laughs> anyway, and again, she gave birth to his brother, Hebel, 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 and Hebel became a keeper of the sheep, and Kwan, Kwan became a tiller of the ground. That's Cain and Abel, right? Yeah, it's spelled very differently here. So it's K-A-Y-I-N. So I guess it could be pronounced Cain. And a tiller of the ground. And yeah, three. And it came to be in the course of time that Cain brought, in, brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to Yahweh. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and their fat. And Yahweh looked to Abel and his offering, but he did not looked to Cain and his offering. And Cain was very wroth and his face fell. Wroth, W-R-O-T-H, meaning he was, hmm, I, I, how to translate it better personally. He was, uh, I, you know, the word I'm looking for cannot pop into my head. So obviously it's not needed here. And his face fell. And Yahweh said to Cain, Why is wrath towards you? Okay, now I'm looking it up over here. Yeah, it says the same thing over there. Why art thou wrath? I gotta like get a dictionary and set it next to me, I guess. I was reading the notes. And six. And Yahweh said to Cain, Why is wrath towards you? And why is your face fallen? It is not Oh, it is not if you do good, you are to be accepted. Is it not if you do good, you are to be accepted? And if you do not do good towards the door is a sin. He is lying 
and toward you is his desire, and you must rule over him. And Cain told Abel his brother, and it came to be, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. And Yahweh said to Cain, Where is your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's guard? It's translated, Am I my brother's keeper in a lot of other verses, but you get it. Am I his babysitter? Am I his babysitter? <laughs> and he said, he capitalized Yahweh. And Yahweh said, what have you done? As if he didn't know. The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. If you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. You shall be a fugitive and wander on the earth. And Cain said to Yahweh, My punishment is too great to bear. See, you have driven me from the face of the ground today, and I am hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and it shall be that anyone who finds me will kill me. We'll get back to that. And Yahweh said to him, well, if anyone kills Cain, he shall be avenged sevenfold. And Yahweh set up a sign for Cain, lest anyone finding him strikes him. So Cain went out from the presence of Yahweh and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived. Knew his wife. We'll keep this PG, but you get it, right? He knew his wife, and she conceived, and bored Hanok. And he built a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Hanok, the city of Hanok. And to Hanok was born Irad, and Irad brought forth the Methusel, Methusel. Yeah, I'm going to 18. Where am I at here? Yeah, it says basically the same thing. I should stop referring to that book. <laughs> it's really just re respelling the same word. It doesn't make it easier for me to pronounce. All right, I was at 18. Uh, he brought forth Methusel, Methuhael, whatever. And and the, the M dude brought forth, yeah, and he brought forth Limic. That's where it goes, Limic. I can pronounce that one. 19. And Limic took for himself two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the second was Tisel, Tizel, Tizaha. I don't know. Aha. Who knows? And Ada bore Yebel, and he was the father of those who dwell in tents with the livestock. Your livestock was in a tent. And his brother's name was Ubal. Ubal? Yeah, Ubal. And he was the father of all those who play the the lyre and the flute. The lyre and the flute. L-Y-R-E. Lyre? Lyre? As for Tizaha, she bore a really long word. Tubalakwayan? <laughs> A smith of all kinds, of tools in bronze and iron. And the sister of Tibal Quayan was Namatha and Lamech. Said, and Lamech said to his wives, Hear my voice, wives of Lamech. Listen to my words. Hear my voice, wives of... He, he's talking to himself in the third person. Ah... <sighs> For I have killed a man want for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. For Cain is avenged sevenfold, and Lamech seventy-sevenfold. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Seth. And for Elohim has appointed me another seed instead of Abel, because Cain had killed him. And to Seth, to him, a son was born, and he called the name of called his name Enosh, and then it was begun to call the name of Yahweh. And then it was begun to call on the name of Yahweh. What's King James say about that? 
and to Seth to him there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. That one's easier to pronounce. And began the began men to call upon the name of the Lord. I uh, basically it's saying they began to call on the name of Yahweh. So what does that mean exactly? Weren't they calling on his name beforehand? Weren't they saying well I guess they really didn't reference it other than Adam calling on the father or was it vice versa the father was calling on Adam but in my translation here they definitely put the name of Yahweh in it definitely instead of you know they're not calling out Lord Lord they're saying him by name and I think there is meaning behind that and those of us that really don't take much stock in names have given it less worth than it actually is the name of the father i mean what would it be like to be on a first name basis with the father hey dude it's up i mean yeah you get it so back when it says uh cain was worried about people killing him now i've heard it said that you know how could he be worried about people if there was only adam and eve and then the two sons well you got to take into account how long people lived back here. The Bible tells us they lived for, you know, close to a thousand years. So just because the Bible says, or talks about Cain and Abel, doesn't mean they hadn't had many children before Cain and Abel. That's my perspective on it. There's a lot of things in the book. See, I've, I've been reading ahead. There's a lot of things in the book that that do that very same thing that you it it's written in a linear fashion but when you get you know when you research it more and you look into it more just because it said hey this happened here and this happened next there what you know you don't realize that there's a huge gap of time in between what happened there and then what happened next and a lot of times there is a huge gap of time and you're just not realizing it because of yeah so um, I'm going to let off here and we'll get back to Genesis 5 next week. Genesis 5 starts, this is the book of genealogy, and that's not fun. That's going to be like a, a really long telling of me butchering a lot of words and a lot of names. Maybe I'll just read it out of, even reading it out of my old King James Version here, because this is one of the older translations of the King James it's it's still a lot of names that I can't pronounce so yeah it begot they begot that's what I heard somebody else say it's the begots book of the Bible yeah the begots book it's really a lot of what it says is he begot him and he begot this and he begot that I'm almost all the way through Genesis I believe I've been reading ahead. I encourage you to read your book every day. Every day. You should definitely read it every day. Just the one day is to be set apart, the Sabbath, Saturday, which is the seventh day according to the American calendar, according to the Hebrew calendar and pretty much every calendar. The seventh day is Saturday. So, yeah. I'm going to leave it right here instead of putting a lot of my own beliefs into the video. If anyone wants to chat about my beliefs, just, you know, leave comments. I will make a video about it if you want. You can send me an email. The email's in the description. I do not put any of the donation links in the description of these videos because you should not make business, business transactions on the Sabbath. So I would ask if you do have, if you do feel the need to support the channel, don't do it on Saturday. I would greatly appreciate that because Saturday is not a day for that. Saturday is a day for your rest. The day is made for you. It's made for me. It's made for us to decompress, relax, study the word, study the word, and just spend time with people you love because you don't know how much time we have left. world's getting crazy out here. All right, this has been James, you know, Grim Survival. Thank you for watching. Thank you guys for your support and encouragement with me doing this. It's still very hard for me.